Some ring bells and some cut ribbons, but in South Africa, we blow a kuri horn to celebrate a new listing on the stock exchange. In its cover story this week, Finwick takes a look at the listings of 2013 and the money being made in the space. On the desk with us now, we have Patricia Kula, Business Development Manager at the JSC, and Chris Pretorius, Director at Deloitte and Touche Sponsor Services. Everyone, thank you and welcome to the show. Tandy Siso, now you authored uh, this particular article and I'm sure you must have seen some benefits to listing. Can you, can you share these with us? Absolutely. Um, I think I started by looking at uh, some of the biggest companies that we have in the exchange. And uh, one tobacco company, uh, British American Tobacco, is actually worth over a trillion rand on the stock exchange after listing, I think, around about 2006, 2007. Right. At about 560 billion, about half of that. So it, it tells you that you know if you if you stick it out and what you know investors would always tell you or you know investment managers and fund managers would always tell you if you want to make money in the stock market stay in the stock market don't worry about fluctuations of going down and up. So we thought we'd actually just go and try and find out who has been listing over the past few years. Right. What has been you know attracting them to listen the JSE but also you know give advice to every other business person that's out there who may want to to list their business um, at some point I've, I've met a couple of um, you know good entrepreneurs and they're saying the ultimate goal the ultimate benchmark of success right. in their businesses is, is to finally list one day but when is the right time to listen? I mean, not every company, Patricia, is going to be a, a, a British uh, uh, American tobacco company. It's not going to go into trillions of rands uh, in what has been six, seven years. Um, so as a company begins to think about that journey, when do you think it's the right time? So timing is the million dollar question, or million rand question, because you know, timing the market is very important. But the important thing about listing is about getting the rationale for listing correct, getting the strategic objectives out there into the public, and really giving the company an ability to raise capital. So for example, if you have a company that's looking at taking the business to the next level, listing is just one of those platforms that can um, take that company to that level. What would be some of the wrong reasons to go for a listing? Um, you know, I think there's a number of reasons, you know, it, it, it's it's um, listing, like I say, you've got to have your strategic objectives in mind and right. Mm -hmm. um, I would say listing uh, would would be done on the wrong reasons if your mates, for example, list and you decide, you know, oh, it's the greatest next thing to do. Um, it really needs to make strategic sense for the business. It's okay. not a quick win. It's not a quick cash out. It's a long term mm. strategic objective for the company. I say generally anything that you do because your mates do and generally <laughs> becomes a really bad idea. But maybe let's uh, come to you, Chris. I mean, uh, Patricia speaks about strategic objectives and I want to unpack these a little bit. What are the basic fundamentals that should be in place before we, uh, you know, a company even opens up mm. itself to the journey towards listing? Yeah. Obviously it must be listable, meaning it should be of sizable um, nature, uh, definitely not too small. If it's too small, it just won't attract any attention and obviously when liquidity will suffer because mm. we have very little shares to trade. Um, and when coming back to your strategy, um, uh, the listing itself would be part of a strategy. You can't really list and then think, oh, what now? Now I'm listed. Mm. Right. Um, you're in the spotlight, the Jason looks at you, you've got all these regulations, and now what? So um, the last thing I see, it would be part of that process, part of a journey. So your strategy might, m might be to merge with another company, mm -hmm. buy other companies, businesses and all that, and do it through a listing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very careful to know why you want to list, mm -hmm. um, then proceed, and once you list it, you must then follow through. No, no you just for the sake of being listed. And, and would you agree stop. that the more listings an economy has and a market has, the better it is and it's a sign of a healthy functioning business environment? Indeed. Indeed, um, especially overseas, also obviously locally. Um, so you know, as of late, quite prominent listed, listed companies. We, you, you can't really compare the kind of hoopla that companies in, say, the, the states get um, when they list you know, on Facebook, sort of, or we have Twitter listing as well. You can't really compare the media attention and, and interest that that garners to, to local listings. Is that correct? Yeah, obviously it's different markets, mm. um, but as of late, a couple of deal listings, so we actually get the both best of both worlds. Mm. Um, so like the, the companies listed in, in specifically the UK and Australia, as of late, a couple of mining companies, um, we actually get, get the best of both worlds. 
Yeah. I think from a profiling perspective, you know, we engage with companies all the time about the prospects of listing. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest rationale for a company to raise is, or to list is number one, capital. Secondly, the, 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 the second benefit that we see and that companies that have listed, and you know, we always tell them, you know, once you're listed, you get huge profiling benefits. Mm -hmm. You actually can't quantify that. Even in the mm -hmm. local markets, mm -hmm. right. the reality of it is that banks, suppliers, your customers will look at you differently. Mm -hmm. And it's something intangible. I mean, it's something very difficult to, yeah. to put a value to. Yeah. So I think from a local perspective, you definitely do get a lot of exposure, not only locally, but also internationally. I mean, from an exchange yeah. perspective, 30 to 40 percent of our trade um, is um, done by foreign investors. Right. So mm -hmm. you also get international exposure. Mm -hmm. I think one of the interesting things that I found during this investigation was that over the years, since about 2008, there's, there's been a, a decreasing number of companies going to list. Mm. One would now imagine that it should be the other way around because companies want capital and they want access to capital. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, is there appetite within the markets to say we want more companies to list? We've got you know, cash hoarded somewhere where we can give these companies more money, get more options within the stock exchange within to mm. put money in. Mm -hmm. is, is that appetite there? There definitely is appetite, you know, it's, it's looking at coming onto the market from an investor perspective, we are constantly hearing from investors, when are those other companies coming to the market, you know, when are they coming to the fore, it all boils down to the company at the end of the day, you know, if you're looking at raising capital, irrespective of whether the company is liquid or not, if I believe in the management, if I feel that the fundamentals are right, and if I believe in the, in the rationale for listing, as an investor, I will invest in that company, irrespective of whether it's listed or not. And from an investor perspective, there certainly is interest. Now, now, now maybe to you as well, Chris, here's a company, it's, it's, it's cash flash, it's got brilliant products, it's got the right audience, it is selling products like hotcakes. And the next logical thing for this company is to list. But the guys are saying, actually, we don't want to list. Now, if they were to list, what would be some of the things that they would be actually sacrificing within that business? Yeah, um, of course, one is uh, privacy. So all of a sudden, they're like in the public domain. Right. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of um, kind of obligations, especially post the listing, post the IPO, for instance, King 3 compliance. Um, the JC regulations, more more regulators looking at them, um, and yeah, so all of a sudden they in the in the public. Mm. Just Let's on that they were not. Um, you quoted a mining consultant in the article, Peter Major, who said that governments around the world fail to appreciate and encourage enough companies to list. Would you agree with that? Not to list. Not to list. Not to list. Because of the regulations yeah. and the... Look, it's, it's a fine balance. Um, it all depends what your end game is. I mean, right. if your strategy comes, comes back to strategy, if the listing is part of the strategy, I don't think that will bother the, the company or the mm -hmm. management or the board. Um, but obviously, with a the listing, there are other obligations. But I think the, those obligations are smaller than the benefits. Let's take uh, a couple of steps forward, and, and I'll bring you back to, the, to your comment, uh, Patricia. You know, when a company takes the decision to, for a secondary listing, what are the considerations uh, that they have to take in, in, into account at that particular time? So from a consideration perspective, I mean, why a company will seek a dual listing, and there's been a number of companies that have come out into the market um, signaling that they might be looking at a secondary listing. I mean, there's a number of benefits. You know, why a company would list, for example, in another jurisdiction is to use their shares as currency to make acquisitions in that, in that market or outside of that market. Mm. Um, and also diversifying shareholder base. Um, you know, just the point on regulation. You know, regulation is very important and we take investor protection very seriously. Um, you know, at the end of the day, companies list in the JSC to raise capital and to raise money. And from a regulation perspective, it is important that it's there to give mm. you guys, the investor, s uh, um, security and credibility that the company is operating in a fit and proper way. Mm. So, and, and, and also from a company perspective, you know, regulation is never a bad thing because ir irrespective of whether you are um, listed or you in the private space, 
king still applies to you. Um, all those principles still apply to you. And at the end of the day, if you've got all the proper procedures and management um, structures in place, it will actually aid you to make decisions in the proper way. I think we've kept most of the conversation confined to big businesses. I mean, let's look at the medium-sized enterprise. Perhaps, Chris, you can come in on this. You know, what are the benefits for them to consider uh, getting onto the Altex or in any other way uh, getting yeah. listed? That way, primarily to, to grow. Um, so, for instance, once you're listed, you can use uh, both shares to buy other companies. So if you're unlisted, um, you're probably limited to bank finance or some debt. So once you're listed, the awareness goes up, you achieve more credibility, and it's easier then mm -hmm. to go and buy some, somebody else. Um, so that, uh, I'll say that's the primary reason for if you're a smaller company, so yeah. like Alt-X or maybe a small company on the main board. I can already think of a question that many uh, small business owners are thinking right now is how much will this whole process cost me? Yeah, look, it's, it obviously depends on the size of a company and the amount of capital to be raised. But probably a smallish company, um, about two to three million rands to get listed. That's the ones of cost at the time of listing and obviously when you've got your ongoing costs. Um, a medium-sized company about 10 million and obviously even a large company about 20 million upwards. What would be a good decision to delist? Delist is uh, if you've got limited trade in your shares, um, loss-making company and no interest from investors. So the question then is why being listed? And I'm sure Tandy Caesar's friends, the small and medium-sized <laughs> enterprises are probably asking, do I get my two to three million back in that regard? Yeah, you get it back over time, uh, right. not immediately. And how <laughs> common are delistings? Does it happen quite often? Or, and what are the circumstances around it? Yeah, there's, I mean, Patricia, uh, the stats, probably uh, the, the smaller companies, uh, probably more of those have been delisted. Mm. Uh, but there are also a couple of takeovers um, mm. where another company takes over another mm. listed company right. uh, through a scheme of arrangement typically, and then the other company gets taken over. So from a schemes of arrangements perspective, if you look at the recent delisting, now in this particular point in the market, there's a lot of consolidation. Most of the delistings have been as a result of the schemes of arrangements, which Chris alluded to. Mm. Now, I, I just want to go back to the road to listing, especially mm -hmm. from the perspective of the small business owners, my friends. <laughs> 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 um, so I've got the money I want to list. I, I, I have to appoint uh, an advisor That's or right. a sponsor. And I want to talk about the role of that advisor or that sponsor. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk main board first. Um, you need a sponsor, you need a corporate advisor, you need auditors, attorneys, you need the JC, and always you need the company. Um, obviously the, the advisor, that's like the, the, the pinnacle uh, running all of this, that would be um, the management of a project, uh, they need to do the structuring, they need to do evaluation of a company, and they need to place the money. Um, if you're talking alt X, you yeah. need a, a designated advisor, Basically the same process, just smaller, um, but virtually the same process. Mm. Okay. Now, so, go ahead. Tell sorry, us now that advisor, after successfully listing, mm -hmm. what is our relationship like going forward? Yeah, um, if you list it, then you must have a sponsor at all times and a DA, a designated advisor, if you alt X. If you are active, what I mean active, a lot of corporate actions, for instance, buy and sell or um, a rights office, then you typically also use a, a corporate advisor. And that corporate advisor will also look for opportunities. So like, say we were advisors to a company, they might say, look, on a shopping list is to look for um, similar companies, or we want to sell something, merge, etc. and you would use that corporate advisor to do that for you. That's interesting. Can I say no to that advice? Because if I go back and say, I listed, when I listed, I had this strategy. I had point A, point B, point yep. C, and you're coming with points at something that I never thought of. Yeah. Can I tell my advice that actually no? Yeah, you can. So yeah. what we do from an exchange perspective is from an Altex, we've actually implemented a director's induction program. And that program is there to equip CEOs right. and directors of those companies right. Um, and give them the knowledge of the listing requirements, corporate finance, insider trading, all of this stuff. So an advisory role is very important, but it's also important for the directors themselves to upskill and have the relevant information to make the right decision. So